Okay, let's try another one. If we do the quotient rule on this, for my first derivative, I get low. d high is 6x minus 1 minus high. d low is just 1 over low squared. So if I distribute, I'm going to get 6x squared minus x. And since I'm only multiplying by 1 over here, I can go ahead and distribute this minus, and I get minus 3x squared plus x minus 1 all over x squared, which becomes 3x squared minus 1 over x squared. Now, when I look at this, I don't see anything that simplifies. However, I do see that I started with a single term in the, in the denominator. We're going to look at that in a minute. If I want to do the second derivative, we need to take the derivative of 3x squared minus 1 over x squared. And so I will get low d high is 6x minus high, d low is 2x, over low squared is x to the fourth, so I get 6x cubed. If I distribute the 2x and the minus at the same time, I get minus 6x cubed and minus a negative here is going to be plus 2x all over x to the fourth. So I get 2x over x to the fourth, which will simplify to 2 over x cubed. Now, when I look at my first derivative, I see that there was a single term in the denominator, and I see that I did simplify my answer. What if, from when we started, with y equals 3x squared minus x plus 1 over x, we had separated all the fractions. Well, we'd have 3x squared over x, that's just 3x, negative x over x, that's minus 1, plus 1 over x, we can write that as plus x to the negative 1. Then my first derivative would have just been a power rule problem, and I would get 3, derivative of negative 1 is 0, derivative of x to the negative 1 is negative x to the negative 2, and our second derivative, 3 goes to 0, negative 2 comes out front, we get positive 2, x to the negative 3, which is the same thing we got doing it the long way. So it really would have benefited me to have paid attention to the fact that I had a single term in the denominator to start with, and I never would have had to use the quotient rule at all. All right, this problem is going to be a product rule. I've got e to the t times sine t. So my first derivative is the derivative of the first, that would be e to the t, times the second function, which is sine t, plus the first function, e to the t, times the derivative of the second function, the derivative of sine is cosine. Now, when I take the derivative of this, I see two product rules. However, this matches our original function. So I already know what the derivative of our first term is. It's e to the t sine t plus e to the t cosine t. So that's what this turned into. And now we need to take the derivative of the second part using the product rule. 
So the derivative of the first function is e to the t times the second function, which is cosine t, plus the first function times the derivative of the second function. Derivative of cosine is negative sine t. Now let's rewrite this so that we can combine some like terms. This is e to the t sine t. Here I see two e to the t cosine t terms. And then we have minus e to the t sine t. So e to the t sine t minus e to the t sine t goes to zero. And our answer is just two e to the t cosine t. Okay, so we did a lot of second derivatives there. Let's go further and find a fourth derivative. So our function is y equals x squared plus three x to the negative three. All of these derivatives are gonna be power rules. So my first derivative is two x, negative three comes out front and I get negative nine x to the negative four. My second derivative is two, plus 36x to the negative five. My third derivative, derivative of two is zero, and so I get negative five times 36 is negative 180x to the negative six. And finally, my fourth derivative, negative six comes out front, and negative six times negative 180 is 1,080, and we get x to the negative 7.